What's up guys, I'm Mike from High Tech Evolution and today we're doing a review about the Nikon Coolpix L810. This is a 16 times megapixel camera and uh, it has a 26 times optical zoom. This equals a lens from 22.5 mm to 585 mm. It has a few modes, easy auto mode for optimizing settings to lightning conditions, an anti-blur function for sharper shots and it also includes lens shift vibration reduction which means that if you for instance walk and you make a picture it gives you a clearer and better shot. This camera has a high ISO mode, it goes from 80 to 1600, it has motion detector and a side zoom lever. Also it includes best shot selector which I will go in depth more about uh, in this video later. It shoots 720p HD video, so it's HD ready, and it has a 3 inch LCD screen with 921,000 dots. It also uses AA batteries, and this camera is designed for the hobby photographers, and it's really easy to use. It's available in a few different colors, it comes in black, blue, bronze, and red. It retailed about 230 euros and I bought this camera in reduction for 160. Now also the L in this series stands for life and it's the easy it's the company's range of easy use point and shoot models. L810 was the biggest in the series and it has a large 26 times optical zoom on the front which means that the lens sticks out quite a bit. With this set you also have a big grip handle for that steady aim shooting and it gives you the feeling of a DSLR camera. Now I'm gonna give you a review about all the options from this camera, I hope you like it. Now let's have a quick look on the zoom options from the Coolpix. We have two places to do this. The first one is placed at the shutter release which you will find on top of the grip and it has a zoom ring wrapped around it. However as I said we have two zoom options and the other one can be found on the lens barrel itself. Now when you're aiming for that steady shooting experience, you have to place your hand under the barrel which will give you the advantage of zooming in and out with your thumb. Um, the zoom options either uh, which on the shutter release or on the barrel are they're both really easy to use and I found them both as comfortable as possible. Now I think it's more of a preference which one you prefer most and um, where I'm gonna use the, the one on the shutter release more than I think on the lens barrel itself. Now if we continue we have the flash and the flash is situated like most cameras on top and on the left side of the camera there's a button for activating the flash. If you leave the flash down like it is now you can choose the flash option in the camera menu but this won't pop up the flash so turning it on in the menu doesn't matter and you will get a message saying that you have to open it up. I will quickly show you guys the arrow message uh, you will see. As you can see it says raise the flash so once you raise the flash I will quickly show you guys the, the front of the camera as well and if you turn the flash on I'll give you guys a quick close up of the screen and it gives you then a few options as you can see. We have the camera in easy auto mode and this is the reason why we have two options in the flash menu and not more. So I'll quickly change it to auto mode and then you have a few different options to choose from. Um, followed of these options are auto, red eye reduction, forced on forced off and the last one is slow sync. These are different options which you can which you have for the, the flash mode on the camera itself. So once you set it back to easy auto mode like it was before then it automatically chooses the right option for you in the situation you're in at that point. Now let's have a look at the buttons from the camera. On top of the camera you have the stereo microphone which is finished in a nice glossy black color. As well next to the microphone we have the power button. So if you press it, it will go off automatically and the response from this is really quick. So let's turn it on again and you will see that after pressing the button the camera is on again. So the response is really quick. Um, on the back you'll also find the direct video buttons. Um, I'll just give you guys a quick close up look of these buttons. Um, so this is the movie button or the direct video button and once you press it, it will automatically shoot a movie. So now it's recording, but I'm not going to record anything now. So once you press the button, it will automatically go into the recording mode and it doesn't matter in which setting you have the camera in. So it's a good thing to remember that you set the settings right before you start recording your video, since it will take over the settings which you used previously for your still shooting. Beneath the small thumb rest, which you see, you see four buttons surrounding the navigation pad. 
The top buttons open up a few different modes, so you see the green camera button and the playback button, which is the blue arrow next to the camera button. The bottom buttons are for the main menu, which you will see here, and the other one is for deleting pictures and video, which I've taken previously, which is this one. I'll now give you guys a quick close up of the buttons as well. So, if you are in the main menu, the center button disguises as a navigation button. I will show this now. So, you can go left and right with the buttons, and as well, you can go down and up with the other buttons. These buttons also have another option uh, for when you are not in the main menu. The up button is for the flash, so you see the flash is now closed, once you open up the flash it has a, a few options. We also have a macro mode here, so you can see the macro mode, but I'll just turn this one off. We have the self timer on the left side and I had put it on pad shooting, so that's why you see the pad option. The right button is for the exposure option, so you can set it to a different exposure level when pressing up or down. Now since this camera is focused on its ease of use, the camera menu is really simple. You will see three tabs here, shooting, video and setup, and all of the menu options are really easy. In playback these options narrows down to two options, which you will see now, so now it's playback menu and the setup menu. The L810 looks very nice and expensive in its shiny plastic body. Now the only negative part I think is after heavily using this camera would it still be as nice as it is now. Since this will get a lot of scratches on it if you don't use a cover. Now I use a, a bag for the camera which I uh, bought together with this camera. Uh, the camera takes 4 AA batteries. So when you buy this camera as you saw in my unboxing review it comes with 4 batteries included. You see here that it has the batteries in here. And also we have our memory card which you put in the, the camera next to the batteries. Batteries have a good side and a bad side. So the, the, the bad side is they run out quickly. But once you need new batteries, almost every shop sells batteries. On the back we also find the tripod socket which is made from plastic. And as well you will find the HDMI connector and the AV output and the adapter connection. This is for if you're going to connect it with an adapter. It's well made, but will the cap still be on your camera if you're going to use this a lot, since this is a rubber cap. Now continuing on to the, on to, to the shooting mode. The shutter time is almost the same as every other digital camera, and the camera will shoot a picture in around 0.08 seconds. We will find three shooting modes in the camera. First you have to set the setting into the auto mode, this so you can get into the different shooting modes from the camera itself. And then you go into the menu and we have a few options. Single, continuous, best shot selector and multi shot. So best shot selector, that's this one. It takes photos until you're done shooting. And this saves the photos onto the buffer memory from the camera. It takes the best photo possible from the picture you've made. So this means the big picture with the most detail. We also have multi shot which takes 24 low resolution pictures and then puts them all into one together. Sometimes this option is nice when you need to make a picture of fast movement outside or anything which is moving or isn't standing still. Playback mode has two tabs and it has some editing menus. So the playback menu is mostly used for organizing and changing details. You can print, rotate the picture, resize the picture copy etc. The other menu option is again just a setting option. I'm not going into detail about this. As last let's talk about the ISO performance. The camera has a few ISO options as you will see here. We have an auto option and then 80, 100, 200, 400, 800 and we have 1600. The lower you set your ISO setting the better result of your picture. ISO 100 and 200 are very good of quality and 80 of course as well. With ISO 1600 you will see very detailed that the image quality isn't where it needs to be anymore. However for the price range in which you find this camera, ISO 1600 is of good quality. I will add a link in the description but if you don't find it straight away, I'm still working on it, on making the last pictures. This so you can see the quality of the pictures itself. It doesn't have its own night mode but there's the automatic setting. So once you set it into the automatic setting, it will automatically choose the best option to make the picture look good. So this will also adjust the ISO setting as well.
But as I said before, you can change this yourself as well. For instance, if you go into the auto mode and you want to make a night picture, you change the ISO setting into a high, higher ISO setting, which you give, which will give you a better picture. If it is not that light outside or inside. As last, we have the file quality and size. The highest quality possible has a star in the menu. You will see this in the menu itself. So if you go to the image mode, you will see that the highest quality size is the first one. It's 64.8 by 34.65. And the star means that it is the highest quality possible. The normal lower setting is obviously found without a star. The highest quality image is around 6 megabytes and the normal size is around 2 megabytes. As last, I'll just have a quick look at the macro mode. I'm now zooming in on the cloth which is laying here and with this camera it doesn't always work well. The macro mode doesn't really seem to do its job right as it loses the right focus point a lot but in this instance it worked well. I hope you can see the picture, you can see the detail of the tablecloth in there. I will also as well post this photo in the link below so you can see it. So this was the in-depth review about the Nikon Coolpix L810. I hope you have enjoyed it. I like doing it. Give me a thumbs up if you do and subscribe for more upcoming videos. Any comments or questions you can drop this in the comment section below or send me an email. Thank you and see you next time.